Hello and welcome back everyone. In this video, we're going to learn how a business uses the pestle analysis within the strategic management process and specifically at the strategic analysis stage. Now, PESTEL, similar to SWOT, as you can clearly see, is an acronym. And each of these letters stands for something in particular. I'm going to give you a hint. PESTEL analysis is actually a review of all the external factors influencing business decisions. External factors influencing business decisions. Rings a bell, I hope. All the videos that you've seen in the first chapter, all 37 of them, was a discussion of all the external factors influencing business decisions. So really, this concept of PESTEL simply combines all the things that you've already learned in the first chapter. What did we learn? We learned about the political changes in the external environment. We learned about the economic, social, technological, environmental, and legal changes that are constantly taking place all around the business within the dynamic external environment. And we know that whenever these changes are changing the space of the business that it operates in, so meaning that there's going to be either a positive and negative impact because of the new way of doing business in that industry, the business will have to adapt and take actions quickly to make the most of this situation. So Pestel analysis gives you an insight into what's really happening all around the business in that dynamic external environment. So since we've gone through all six of these elements, I'm just going to quickly going to list down some of the things that we've discussed across these Pestel changes. And then we will discuss how the business uses the Pestel analysis to make strategies. When we were discussing things regarding the political changes in the external environment, we discussed things such as privatization, when the government sells its stake to the private sector, or nationalization, when the government takes the stake away from private sector and brings it into public control. We discussed things such as labor laws to protect the workers from getting exploited, we discussed consumer rights, which made sure that there was uh, the workers, the excuse me, the consumers were not being cheated and they were being uh, charged a fair price, and making sure that customers have uh, right choices available and the businesses are competing fairly and not getting involved in forming monopolies or oligopolies. When we were discussing the economic changes, we discussed things such as economic growth, which is measured by looking at the gross domestic product of the country. We discussed inflation, which is a constant, constant increase in price. And we discussed two causes of it, demand pull and cost push. We discussed government policies, namely the fiscal and the monetary policies. And in fact, we discussed exchange rate and supply side policies as well. Then we discussed how an appreciation or a depreciation in the exchange rate will have an impact on the imports and exports of a business. And finally, the good and bad that comes with high or low levels of unemployment. On the social front, we discuss the responsibilities that the business has towards the society and the way it fulfills them through means such as corporate social responsibility, so taking the money, some money out of your profit and investing in social welfare programs, looking at the population changes to be able to change your own products to fit the needs of different people of different age groups, how income levels and changes in them have an impact on the revenue of a business, the process of urbanization where more and more people are moving away from the rural areas and moving to urban areas and bigger cities for better lifestyles and better jobs. And finally, just making sure that constant market research is available on the way the different di demographics are being formed in the country. So age groups, income levels, uh, gender, all those answers business would like to be able to make the right products for the right consumers. Then our discussion took us to the technological changes that are uh, taking place all across the dynamic external environment. And we discussed technologies such as computer-aided design, computer-aided manufacturing, which is used in by the operations department to speed up the production process and become more accurate. 
Also, to manage the operations better, companies have also started using the enterprise resource planning software more. And we will discuss this more later on in operations of A2. So do not worry. Then the, the use and the widespread use of internet and the other applications that come with it have also made businesses uh, better for it. And finally, of course, due to COVID and uh, working from home uh, phase of it, businesses were able to find new ways of working remotely and getting more out of the workers and even in some cases becoming more efficient. On the environmental side, businesses are, have now started conducting environmental audits to see their impact on the environment. They know that the customer is more aware now. There is a, a greater demand from consumers for, to, for the business to be more sustainable. So making use of more renewable energy and getting involved in more go green drive. So making use of uh, renewable energy like solar, uh, water, hydro and things like that is something that consumers expect from the businesses that they're buying from. And finally, on the legal side, we know that there are trade laws that businesses have to abide by. There are tax laws. Of course, tax evasion is a serious offense and you can get into trouble. Some countries are very strict on copyright protection. So they will make sure that you're not copying anyone's idea. If you are, you get fines. All countries, regardless of wherever you're working, you will need to disclose your financial information and that's a legal requirement. And in some countries, all products must can, uh, carry their nutritional information on them. So these are all things that we've already discussed in the past and they collectively will then form the pest analysis and simply business conducts this to get an idea of what's happening around them. Remember, this is just a way of looking at the external environment not the internal. So, if you really think about the pest analysis, it's half of the SWOT analysis. Remember, in SWOT you looked at opportunities and threats for the external environment and you're doing the same thing within PESTEL. You're looking at the opportunities and threats in the external environment through the eyes of PESTEL. So, Pestel and SWOT have similar advantages and disadvantages in that respect. First of all, the biggest advantage is that you're able to gauge how the environment around you is changing and what are the strategies you need to adapt to, to adopt in order to adapt to these changes. So it helps you to prepare. Secondly, it gives you targets to achieve. You know exactly what's going for you, what's not going for you, and what you need to build on. But again, it's just very, very or, or um, straightforward basic no detailed plan is provided and again it's a big part of the strategic management process disadvantages same as SWOT is that you're looking at an external environment which is constantly evolving so you need to regularly update your pastel analysis you know that some businesses will become multinationals and they will be operating in multiple external environments so they will need to conduct multiple Pestel analysis for each country that they're operating in. So that's an added cost of it. And of course, to constantly review it as well. And finally, whoever does it will have a rather subjective view of it. You might say that politically things are going well for us. And another person might argue the exact opposite. So subjectivity of it is a question mark. However, you know that you can't get away from this external environment as a business. You must be constantly engaging with it constantly researching about it, how things are moving uh, and in which direction are they moving and which direction does the business need to take in order to make the most of this situation. That's what the best analysis will allow us to do and hopefully you understand as well the significance of conducting it.